so I bought, so I saw that. I went, oh my God, this problem is massive and huge and what have you. I went, okay, so the talks we've done are so good, but really people mentioned WhatsApp, people mentioned uh, Facebook, people mentioned Instagram, none of which I have. So I thought, this is more than LinkedIn, it's social, uh, social media. And then I thought, well, so the reason for the Me Too tag is for the reason for the Me Too tag as it originally started. Ultimately, abuse online is happening millions and millions and millions and millions of times every single day to our sisters, to our mothers, to our wives, um, and to men, but it is women who have been the ones to step forward. Um, Ultimately, at the moment, there's about 12 stories on the website. So I had thought, oh yeah, everyone will want to do this if 10,000 people can report such a serious thing about sexual assault, you'd think social Me Too would take off. It hasn't yet. That's why I'm here today. Because sooner or later, I'm going to speak to the right person. And sooner or later, people are going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, I can get this off my chest. I can get this out of my head. I can get it down on paper, effectively. Um, So where I am is I bought the website. I bought the domain name. Some talented people uh, built me a website. But nothing because I I do these posts and obviously support them. And they've got their thing on the bar. It's a, so it, it's I am mar- I'm their marketing person in terms of I keep their name in the in the complete circulation in LinkedIn. So they built me the website. I've uh, and the, uh, we're now up to season twelve, but I have a load of recordings. So I am running a long way behind with recordings from other things. So. People had not been sharing on their own channels. They'd been just commenting on the one on Social Me Too LinkedIn page. We've got 1,500 followers, but they are extremely inactive. They're just they're just there. Now, in fairness, people are asking me to follow things all the time, subscribe to this newsletter or what have you. I've not read a single one ever, ever. So. I'm not surprised that we haven't yet reached the tipping point, but that's what we need to do. We need to get to a point where people go, oh, you've had a bad experience. Lobby, because you can upload screenshots, you could upload audio. There's a voice changing apps on most people's mobile phones. I recorded one using a voice changer, which is at the bottom where you where you'd leave your stories. So you know, people could leave screenshots, just blow out their own night. Um, and yeah, go, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, um, and I'm looking at, at some of the stories. Um, what, what, I, what I'm trying to understand is, um, and it's, you know, it's a laudable idea, it's a great idea, and, it, and, you know, it's coming from the right place. However, what I'm trying to understand, what is, um, what does, a person, and if, if it were me that I had the experience, and I know it's predominantly not my, not me, it would be younger people and predominantly of the opposite sex. But what would I gain from sharing my story? What is the, what is that I do that I, that it helps me by putting it on social me too? Aside from the sharing, what else would yes. I get? So, it became very quickly obvious that nothing I'm going to do is going to change the behavior of the people that abuse. It's largely, not exclusively, but it's largely true that people that abuse others have a lot of pain or abuse in their own stories, their own lives. Uh, that's where the issue of male rape, child rape, uh, child abuse for, for boys, um, absent fathers, all this sort of shit leads to Uh, toxic uh, uh, teenagers and adults Um, so I realized pretty quickly that wasn't going to do it Um, so I thought okay if we can get 10,000 stories or 20,000 stories or 30,000 stories then I can go to LinkedIn and others and I can say this is the truth the daily truth because in the UK 